back for part two. So here we have the big capacitor. <clears throat> I'll turn it on again to see how it pulls. Then it discharges and pulls again, reloads. Well, we checked um, for the video cutoff. We checked and seen that the LED would not light up. And now we're going to show the importance in the rate of change in wireless. So we're going to go down to the smallest capacitor I have. And we're going to insert it. And then we're going to click on. You can see the field will oscillate back and forth black. So you can see that. So now the rate of change in current has taken place. So now we can see it in the light. Oh, we don't want that one. That one's a big one. We want to go smaller, like this. A small one. Itty bitty. So let's put the itty bitty out. When I seen that flashing, I knew we had the wrong capacitor because we'll see like a steady light pretty much. We'll click it on. You can see the field and the inductor move. Now let's look at the inductor. You can see it jostling back and forth faintly because of the speed, the rate of, of change is so fast that it's keeping <clears throat> even the compass pretty close to its field. Here in the light, that shows it off. You can see it flicker a little bit, but not much. And now we'll take the LED and we'll put it up here and we'll check it. You can see it's on. And you can see this is touching nothing. And then that's on. And then over here, because this is a dipole situation, I gotta switch over to the other side. Well, let me show you why. There's the one side. Not going on, not going on. Now if I switch sides, get pretty good at this. If I switch sides, you should see it. Red and it lighting up. Over here is lighting up faintly, but it's lighting up. <clears throat> so it comes down to how fast the switching oscillator switches the electromagnetic field in the inductor. And that will determine how much current you get. So, what I wanted to really bring to the table to you guys is a little bit more of the backstage stuff, how I learn, and um, I thought it'd be interesting for you instead of just the videos I've been doing. I know they're kind of cool and stuff, but it really comes down to the studies you do, and you don't really post most of what you do. But um, if you guys want me to draw up the circuit for this, I pretty much would do it for you with the 555. Um, uh, what we're going to do on my next video with you guys is <clears throat> we're going to uh, talk about the LC circuit. And that pretty much is what we have over there. We have an inductor and we have capacitance. Inductor is the secondary. The inductor does not have to have an iron core. It can be an air core. 
So even these air capacitors are inductors. On the next video, what I want to do is uh, put a capacitor in line with this inductor. And we're going to start off with throwing a one transistor of 12 volts at it. And then we're going to increase and double the voltage and current by using two transistors. Then we'll start to step it up, three, four, five, six, and so on, and increase the current. And that will be based on the inductance from the inductor that we pick for my circuitry. As I go on, I'll show you the differences in, in what happens. Like, for instance, this guy, when you fire it up, I mean, this is actually all the way in my house, which is from here to my house and then the other end of my house, which I'm lighting up the LED. Um, pretty much is like 90 feet away, every bit of it. So I'm really, with the barbaric stuff, I'm able to send it out. But with using the circuitry and learning each component of what they do and how they get the math to find out what each component can be changed based on the outcome you want using the equations on a lot of the components. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I guess I had not enough storage on the first one. I wanted you to see that I had to make a quicker delivery by changing the capacitor in the circuit for the wireless to kick in. And on top of that, you can see that the rate of change that the um, the compass had switched over to the electromagnetic field of the inductor and it literally kept the compass over because it was so fast it was staying there even though it was changing at a fast rate then we'll get into the LC circuit and um, how we can control um, things and, and add stuff to it to make it like a, uh, a LCR circuit and an oscillator with a steady frequency and how this whole development of this wireless company I'm developing um, will come into play. And don't forget, you guys, um, looking for smart individuals to be part of a team. Um, doesn't really matter on your qualifications, but you have to have certain interests and certain um, um, knowledge about different aspects of all the things you've seen in my video. Looking to bring some people aboard. Uh, basically, it's a think tank. Uh, we could all Skype, be part of a group, set up an organization, and start developing patents. So that means we'll be needing think tank people as well as some field people like myself. I love to build. I mean, heck, I built this in yesterday in six hours, and I've been playing with it. <clears throat> and uh, it's, it's amazing what you learn. And just when you're frustrated, you want to go back in the house and, 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 and call it quits. You know, you learn a little something more, and it pulls you back in. And that's the same thing I just want to say with Ed Lee Scallon. Let's talk about Ed real quick. I'll get you guys off the video. Um, the, in, the inductor uh, reminds me of when I was learning about Ed, which each one of these are north-south, north-south, north-south. And I had to wrap wire about 50 turns around each one. And what I did was I uh, did individual ones and then I figured out which way do I need to put the positive or negative on the coil to make sure it's the same as the pole that it's the magnet already has. And as I started to do that, uh, this was a couple years ago, and I started to use one wire and I wrapped it this way 
and I knew that that would make a um, so let's go get the compass. Um, So that's the south and that's the north. So I would wrap this one way and when you put power on it, it stayed south but it was a lot stronger. And then over here I wrapped it the opposite way. So I kept one wire. And I want you guys to think about what I'm saying and, and, and leave, leave your comments because um, I like to answer them. Uh, we're talking about energy going through the wire, and you have the north and south twisted by each other all the way through in a corkscrew fashion. And here you can see when I did this, I put north and south as a start. Turned there, got to here, came over here, turned this way got to here, came and turned the opposite way, then the opposite way, then the opposite way, and I just put north-south on the end, and each individual magnet was its true orientation, and depending on how many turns I did around it and, and how many volts I put in it, the stronger the magnet got. Think about that the same energy north that was coming into the top wire stayed the same even though it turned different but it but only the opposite pole came out of how it was spun so it's amazing to see just by orientation of how the wire was spun as a inductor around the core how that field presented itself as a north or south and and nothing changed in the wire how the north and south went in but just by wrapping each individual one changed each pole it sucked me in so much that i had to learn more about other things and obviously you learn about this guy and as soon as you see a bulb in your hand light up it, it, it pulls you in pulls you in. So I apologize to some of my ugly scowling followers um, about this because it's this to, to really know Ed is to know the machine and not the machine as just electrical rotor. It's not just a rotor. There's so much more going on just by what Ed writes. Everything he writes. All his books and stuff. I got I got everything. But there he is right there with his machine. With my machine. Right there. So he's got this bar going across the top. He's holding down some box. He's got chains coming out with wires coming out. Running right up to there, which is obviously a capacitor. And then there's another one of these or something like it behind it. And everything else going on on top, who knows. But my passion for Ed, and I, I really like the fact that Ed allowed me to learn about all these other things. He brought me to these other people. So I hope you guys appreciate it. Um, leave your comments. A lot more coming back with Ed, too, because I'll bring the inductor version, the rate of change, the Kirchhoff's law, or rule will bring that in play to where we know the rate of change by the wheel turning and going to its its box that it has and it's the rate of change with the current that will allow this wheel to spin not only on its own but to have a collapsing field on the inside because not only See, Ed's wheel was stripped of copper, okay? They, 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 after he died, they broke in, they stripped his wheel. So why is this here? What's missing inside there? And was there wire wrapped around the outside like I have it? And was there wire arrangement inside? I believe so. I believe so. 
That's the motor block underneath. I got a pulley down there if I wanted to turn it. 